So which one is it? Which one is it? Okay. The first thing I'm going to do, sorry, Akil. The first thing I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to rule out a quarter. Here's how. Here's why. Okay. Uh, remember, this probability tree is all labeled all over, right? It's particularly, it's labeled with these fractions. Why did I bother doing that? So you know the probability of each event? So I know the probability of each event, and specifically, like the reason it's important to know that is because they're not all the same. Do, do you agree, right? This event is less likely than this one. So had I drawn the diagram like this, I would be implying everything has the same chance. Okay, everything's equal weighting. I guess that would make it 50 50, a half a half. But that's not the case. It's not true. Okay, so each time you consider one of the little components, one of the stages of the event, um, they're all weighted differently, is the way that I would say it. Okay, it's a little more obvious if you think about it, like rolling a six and not rolling six. Well, clearly, one is much less likely than the other, so you're going to get different probabilities all the way through. So even though there are four possibilities, it's not simply one out of four. I've got to think about something a little more specific. So these numbers are going to come into play, these guys here. In fact, you may like to circle them. This will do. So yes, we're going to come, come to this. This guy and this guy. So my question then is, do I add these or do I multiply them? Oops. Now, so, I've heard the suggestion, where did I put, I keep on putting things down, sorry. This is not the one I want, this is a dud. Did anyone see, did I put it down on someone's desk? Or just drop it somewhere? Oh, it's hiding. There we go. Um, I do need to add sometimes, and I do need to multiply sometimes. So my question is, which one and why? Hmm. Now, some of you have said to me, multiply. If you said that, my question is, for what reason? Why multiply and not add? Yeah, Eliana. I was just going to guess, isn't when you add, that's when you're going downwards, and then when you multiply, it's when you're going from each Okay, so what Eliana said is exactly right. I'll come back to it in a moment in more detail. What, in case you didn't hear it, was as I go down, if I'm considering like different things together, I add. If I go across, I multiply. Now, that's exactly true. But it doesn't tell me why that's true. Uh, and the reason why I don't like that is because in an exam, under pressure, I'm just as likely to remember it the other way around. Because there's no clear reason as to it's this or the other one. It's a bit random, to be honest. Let me try and explain. Okay? Let's think about something simpler. Let's think about something simpler. So what's hard about this is that it's a complicated situation. So if I give you a simpler situation, okay? heads or tails? It's heads. Um, I'm going to go again. Heads or tails? Tails. Heads again. Yes. Okay. Now, I just flipped two uh, heads in a row. What's the probability of flipping two heads in a row? What's the probability of flipping a head? Just, just one. It's a half. 50%, right? That was the first time. What about the second time? Now, just like here, I've got a multi-stage event. Do I add or do I multiply? What would happen if I added? A half plus a half <laughs> is one. What does that mean in probability terms? That means it's going to happen, guaranteed, right? Thanks. All good. And yeah, tough. Okay. It's a short test. Uh, actually. They're also really smart, but <laughs> it was a short test. Um, this, doesn't, this doesn't seem right, does it? Right? What this is saying is, oh, there's a 100% chance that you'll flip two heads in a row. How many times am I going to have to flip to prove this wrong? Heads. That's embarrassing, isn't it? That was a bad tail. There we go. Fine. Okay. So thankfully, through experimentation, we can prove it's not a 100% chance you're going to get two heads in a row. In fact, <laughs> it's a 25% chance. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Right, it's a quarter. Okay. So what are we going to do as a conclusion, right? To work out the probability of getting a composite number twice in a row, 
I'm going to multiply across. This is the reason why it's multiplying across and adding down. Because if you did it any other way, you would get crazy things, right? Where it's like, the more times you do something, the more likely it becomes. What about three heads in a row? If you were adding, then it's like, oh yeah, this is 150% likely. Okay, so that, that, that's bogus, okay? That's going to be a ninth. I'm going to be a bit rude and put equal sides across the page because I've run out of space. What's the probability of this? Composite, then, not a composite. Have a look, have a look. It's different, isn't it? A third times two thirds. Two over nine. What about this one? Look, look at them across. Yeah, that, that's kind of important. That means something different. That's going to be two over nine again. And the very last one, that's 4 and 9, isn't it? Now, remember I said to you before, if you look at any individual level, so, yeah, that'll do. Here's a level here. What do the probabilities add up to? 1. What about these? 1. Each, each part adds up to 1, right? And that's a really important thing to look for. One of the ways that you know that you've done this final step right is that it's still true. One ninth, two ninths, two ninths, four ninths. It still adds up to one. Does that make sense? So this is actually a really important way that you can know that you have done it right. 